Today's video is sponsored by our very own Spring Store, but more about that later. Hi everybody and welcome to the Surface Interval in association with Empora. So, years ago, back in 2016 when we were still running green screen and my hair was still under control so I didn't have to wear this hat, we thought about the future of scuba diving and what it might be like and some of the projects that people were working on. We later did a part two video on some more ideas that we thought would be a great idea for scuba diving and we thought it would be great to dig up that time capsule of a video and rifle through it like an enthusiastic Blue Peter presenter to see what's changed in those few years Years and just how far we've come. So do we have Iron Man-like helmets and magic science technology that makes our scuba diving easier and safer? Let's dive in and look at the future of scuba diving updated. The first one was the Orb Rebreather, which was basically a rebreather in a motorcycle helmet. This basically means that instead of bulky tanks and scrubber and hoses and counter lungs all over you, you just pop a helmet on and you jump in the water. Sounds good. Well, it kind of exists. Um, Dima 2019 unveiled the Aqua Breather from Hydroid. Uh, in front of a live audience, a diver jumped in a shallow pool with nothing but a wetsuit, fins, and a big helmet, and they swam around gently with minimal bubbles coming out of the helmet, proving it wasn't really open circuit, um, whilst a spokesperson explained how the system works. Apparently it uses a small cartridge about the size of a, a drinks can that supply the diver with oxygen and scrub the carbon dioxide out of what they're breathing. Since then, um, they haven't really released any other footage of anybody actually in deep water using their helmets and their social media channels are quite quiet. Um, if it really does work, then yeah, they say it does. It is gonna be a, an incredible leap forwards if it is working, but I'd still dive with a bailout. Uh, time will tell if we do start to see more and more of these in the water, but I think it's gonna be quite a long time. One thing in rebreather technology I am seeing an increase in is side mount designs with rebreathers shaped like a single stage tank for sort of flexibility in the water so you can just side mount your rebreather. <laughs> Perfluorocarbon and other liquid breathing materials made famous by James Cameron's The Abyss allow organisms to breathe a fluid instead of a gas underwater, which has multiple benefits. Um, these oxygen-rich fluids could be used for patients with pulmonary and cardiac trauma, especially in pediatrics because their little bodies are better suited to breathing fluids, as well as deep sea diving and even space exploration as well. The technology sort of exists, technically, um, and it has done for quite a while. I mean, the rat, if you've seen the full cut of the abyss, was actually breathing the fluid for real in that scene. So it works, it's just not great for the body, and the mode of application hasn't really been established properly yet, or at least released outside of Area 51 or wherever it is that they're working on it. One of the big problems with the system, other than the feeling of breathing liquid inside of your lungs, is the removal of CO2 using liquids. For some reason, the breathing systems that humans and most other air breathing animals on this planet have evolved over millions of years is quite efficient and good at what it's doing, and trying to modify it to breathe liquid isn't really working that well. There is, however, a US patent that's been filed for a liquid breathing system that could be connected to a diver's blood supply, and that gets filtered through a CO2 scrubber, but I don't think there are gonna to be too many volunteers for that project, and I can't see us sticking needles right before a dive. Ugh, I think it's still filed under to be continued, this one. <laughs> Uh, 
scuba diving masks with built-in cameras and heads-up displays. Um, we have this. Um, we've actually had this for quite a while, to be honest, uh, but the technology is just getting better and better all of the time. The problem with most HUD masks is that you're limited to the mask that it fits. And if that mask doesn't fit you, then you're stuck with a really expensive mask and a computer mixed into it that you just can't use. Some brands have created more flexible options where the computer attaches to a range of their masks, but not a universal range, or it can attach onto the hose of your second stage itself and just pop in the corner of your view, but you're still limited to the masks that you can actually wear, and if you need to swap your second stages, uh, you lose that dive computer. They have been working on some very impressive HUD displays in commercial helmets where using augmented reality and sonar scanning, whatever it is, it can actually show divers their surroundings even in zero visibility, which is just objectively very, very cool. But at this point, it's gonna be bonkers expensive and the technology requires so much technology, including a full-on Kirby Morgan style helmet to work. So give this a few years, we might hopefully see a smaller and smaller box that you can fit onto your tank or something and then that plugs into your mask, but it's not going to be any day soon. We're, we're going to have to wait for this one. Uh, yeah. Virtual reality scuba dives are still a thing, they do exist. With lockdowns all over the world recently, people have been trapped at home and wanting to explore places other than their living room. So we did see various dive sites online for you to explore at home on your computer or with a sort of VR headset. But it'll never replace the real thing. People haven't fully embraced VR headsets yet for gaming, so it's gonna be some amazing marketing if a company manages to convince everybody to buy one of these kind of tables on springs with straps for your arms and your legs to let you experience diving and moving through the water in your living room. It's just cheaper and easier to just buy the equipment and do it for real. I wanted a BCD that's connected to your dive computer or something that can automatically adjust your buoyancy as you ascend and descend through the water. So you never have to worry about if you're a little bit too positive or too negative in the water, you're just always neutrally buoyant. Instead of a hose with two buttons on it down your left hand shoulder, you have one with three buttons. So you have one button for positive, so that you can float on the surface, that's one setting. A button for neutrally buoyant, so you're neutrally buoyant wherever you swim around in the water. And a button for negative if you need to do something on the bottom and you need to be negatively buoyant. You'd have manual controls as well for just in case, but that doesn't really exist yet. Uh, there are research papers in journals online that you can look up, so people are working on it. Uh, it just doesn't really exist yet. Calling all scuba divers want to stand out of the non-diving crowd? Do you want people to know that you're a scuba diver? Well, then our very own spring store will help you out. We stock tees, stickers, hoodies, phone cases, even mugs that all have a scuba diving theme. From our super popular emotional bolt snap tee, our cave shark sticker to our scuba dude hoodie, we have something for everyone. And our range is becoming more eco-friendly each month thanks to Spring's eco-friendly range. Each order is printed fresh, which means less waste, less plastic, and it's better for the environment and also helps battle clothing waste as well. To view our full range, just click on the link pinned in the comments. And hey, why not treat yourself to 10% off your total order with the discount code DSN10. That's DSN10. Okay, back to the video. Fins that have motors on them to buzz you through the water. Uh, we have these, uh, they're called DPVs, uh, or Diver Propulsion Vehicles, and the improvements in battery and motor technology has made them smaller and faster. Modern DPVs range from the small, fun, kind of sea do style DPVs to the proper big cylindrical DPVs that buzz technical divers around. But now we're seeing smaller builds with lithium-ion batteries and impellers inside of them to give you amazing 
amazing performance in very compact little bodies. So you you still have to hold on to them like a DPV. Um, there were some that were rumored to be used, uh, or at least designed by the military, uh, that had two propellers that you strapped to either side of your legs uh, to kind of buzz around. I don't think those have gone very far um, as far as people buying them, but it's an interesting concept. I just think most people are just gonna stick to a, a single DPV. Fog-proof masks would be great. A mask that you never have to spit in before a dive to keep it from fogging up. Um, whilst we're not 100% there, Cressy did make a big jump forward with their Calibro mask, which has a small internal seal kind of around your nose that when you exhale through your nose to equalize your mask, it stops that warm, humid air from flushing straight over the glass lenses. Uh, there are also film layers that you can kind of put on the inside of your lenses to help them uh, prevent fog from forming so we're we're kind of there we're not 100 but you do have some options and of course spit still works <laughs> A tablet that you can take before a dive that eliminates the problem of supersaturation in your tissues or even the toxicity or narcotic effect of different gases at depth. That would be cool. Now, I'm no chemist or biologist, uh, but I don't think this is even in the realms of possibility, to be honest. Uh, it would be great. Uh, the dive computer market would certainly suffer because no one would need dive computers anymore. I mean, maybe there's a conspiracy theory in there that the dive computer manufacturers are covering it up to keep their sales figures. I, I thoroughly doubt that's the case. Um, but I don't think anybody is really working on this. I, I can't really imagine where you'd start to make a drug that you can buy over the counter that affects how your body absorbs different gases at different depths and how that would be safe to just hand out. But it would be cool. It would also be cool if there was a drug that could defy other laws like gravity. So I don't think this one is gonna happen. <laughs> A thinner, less buoyant wetsuit. Whilst we don't really have any amazing wetsuits that are substantially warmer than they were before, the current generations of wetsuits and wetsuit linings, more importantly, have improved a lot. We now have more flexible, compression-resistant neoprene, so you can move around a lot easier to keep us warm, and of course better seals and stitching throughout the suits that help keep us warmer in the water. The neoprene and the lining itself is now being made for more environmentally friendly materials instead of petroleum-based neoprene. It can now be made from stuff like limestone. I honestly have never really understood how you can make a neoprene wetsuit out of rock. Um, but you can also find it being grown as a plant product and then harvested sustainably in stuff like Ulex. More and more wetsuits have their nylon and polyester linings on the inside and the outside are being made from post-consumer grade plastic bottles and recycled fishing gear. So the wetsuit market is actively becoming better for the planet. And whilst wetsuits aren't an amazing suit that's just like a one mil thick suit that you can dive in the Arctic yet, at least the thicker suits, the five mils and the seven mils, they do keep you warm and they are more stretchier now and they're better for the planet. So we're heading in the right direction, but we're not quite at one mil yet. Well, we've come a long way, haven't we? One of the biggest changes in the diving industry in the last five years is mainly in the reduction of plastic packaging in new equipment. Most of the big manufacturers are now exclusively using recycled or even cost compostable materials for their packaging. I, lots of cardboard boxes and vegetable starch bags that kind of look like plastic bags, but they're not. They actually break down over time when they're composted, so you can throw them in the compost heat and, uh, and then use that to feed your plants. Hopefully the rest of the world can uh, sort of catch on. I mean, supermarkets around the world, they're still using plastic wrapping in fruits and vegetables that don't even need packaging at all. But we'll hopefully get there one day. So what is the best thing or new technology that you love about the scuba diving industry today? Or what would you love to see become a real thing? Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out our website, simplyscuba.com, for all of your scuba diving needs. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving.